Let's discuss the ultimate roadmap to become the best embedded engineer. See, if your aim is to just get into a top company that pays you really well, then this video is not for you. This video is for those who genuinely want to know what it takes to be the best embedded engineer out there. If you are good at what you do, everything else will follow. You can get good company with the best pay. In this video, we'll discuss the roadmap using practical examples, which will make the video interesting and easy at the same time. So watch this video till the end. Let's divide this video into four parts. First, basics you need to master for embedded. First, build a strong foundation and only then go further. Then we'll see embedded in different worlds, mainly semiconductor industry and consumer electronics industry. Depending on which field you focus on, the skills you need to develop will be different. Then we will explore projects and free open source tools to make them. Finally, let's conclude with the skills that every embedded engineer must have. But before we go any further, make sure to like and subscribe so that we can build a strong electronics community. Okay, let's start with the basics. These basics will help you to be a great embedded engineer no matter the industry or the role. Let's keep it like this. First, I'll convince you on why you need to master a particular topic or a skill and how it is exactly used in the industry. Then we'll discuss the best resources to master that very topic. First. C programming. This is one language you definitely have to master and be very, very comfortable with. But why C? As an embedded engineer, you will be constantly interacting with the hardware. C is the most closest you can get to the hardware after assembly language. So it's obviously very fast, making it best for embedded systems. You can yourself test this. In C, write a while loop to count from 0 to 1 billion and similarly write it in Python. If you're using a Linux based system, which you should, Run the time command on the term and it will give you the execution time. Here I first compile the C code and then run it using time command. And as you can see, it just took 1.5 seconds to count till a billion. Now let's run the Python code. One eternity later. Okay, the Python code has finally executed. And as you can see, it took 1 minute 19 seconds, whereas C had just taken 1.5 seconds to count to a billion. That makes C almost 50 times faster than Python. But why C faster than Python? One reason is of course because C is compiled and Python is interpreted language. In C, the whole code is first translated into machine code, that is your binary code, which runs on your machine directly. But in Python, the code is translated line by line during the runtime. It's like two different translators. One who first understands completely what you're saying and then translates and the other who translates each line of what you say. Now you tell me which one is faster. Of course, the first translator, that is your compiler. But the main reason why C is the fastest and has the best performance is because it gives the entire control to the programmer. You can literally do whatever you want. But as they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. You have to be very conscious while writing the code. See, in most of the languages, there is something called garbage collector. It basically manages the memory. If there is any unused memory, it automatically reclaims it, ensuring the program does not run out of memory anytime. But in C, you don't have this. You're totally in charge of the memory. This has both pros and cons. The advantage is that there is nothing extra running on the CPU like your garbage collector. That consumes extra memory and clock cycles of your CPU. The disadvantage is, of course, there is no memory safety and if you overuse the memory, your code can very well crash. That is why you will have to be very, very careful while using the memory. But there is one emerging language that has all the best things of C with a memory safety. Let's discuss that later in the video. Not only C is the fastest, but it also gives you the complete control. By now, you should be convinced why learning C is so very important for embedded. But your approach to learn C cannot be like a general software engineer. Then what should your approach be to learn C for embedded systems? First, get comfortable with the basic syntax of C and then get used to doing all the basic things in C. Start hands-on from the very first day itself. Then spend time in knowing all the data types in C. You should know what data type will suit you best for the task. Like say, there is some sensor data that can be only 32-bit positive integer. Now, to collect the data in a variable, what data type will you use? A regular software engineer will simply declare in type and go ahead. But as an embedded engineer, you should immediately think of unsigned int. In signed data type, you waste one bit only to store if the number is positive or negative. But here, as we are dealing with only positive integers, why to even waste a bit? Now you are literally in control. 
you know what max data can fit in and you are using the memory efficiently and then if you're using some constant like pi which is always 3.14 throughout the code you use const data type then you should know how to use volatile for variables that can change values outside the scope of the program like a variable that is modified by an interrupt say you are detecting an object using a pir sensor the variable that receives data from the pir sensor should be of volatile type so whenever the pir detects an object the variable is set to 1 by the interrupt which is not under the control of the program going to the next level you can use const and volatile together now you tell me in the comments where this can be used and some other use cases of volatile once you are properly comfortable with all the data types go ahead and completely master pointers and then work on the most important thing this skill will be evaluated in every embedded interview manipulation it can be bit manipulation string manipulation or pointer manipulation mainly concentrate on bit manipulation and for this you need to know all the logical operators like and or xor left shift right shift and specially know bit toggling and bit masking take it from me every recruiter will want to know how good you are in this topic even after you enter the industry you will be doing a lot of bit manipulation so practice this as much as you can then start with memory management as i said before the whole game is playing with the memory but very carefully for example you allocated some memory but you forgot to free it and your program ran out of memory this is called a memory leak you should always ensure that this never happens to your program so explore the complete memory layout of c you should know how the final compiled code is segregated in the memory where does the uninitialized and the initialized data go difference between stack and heap very very important here is where you exactly understand the difference between static and dynamic memory make sure to keep these things in mind first how to allocate and deallocate memory when to use malloc calloc and reloc second what are the checks before and after allocating or freeing up the memory third when to free up the allocated memory and when not to we'll talk in detail about all of this in some other video after this start exploring data structures especially arrays and linked list only if you have mastered pointers will you be able to do linked list properly do everything in linked list traversal insertion reversing the linked list deleting sorting double linked list this will make you comfortable with pointers and this is more like an aptitude it will also make your brain sharp for every code you write know the space and time complexity what i have seen mostly is people are very comfortable to tell the time complexity of the program when it comes to the space complexity most of the people struggle to answer once you are comfortable with linked list start implementing stacks and queues using both arrays and linked list okay to summarize first master different data types in c then get comfortable with pointers then master bit manipulation string manipulation specially practice bit masking and bit toggling then understand the complete memory layout of c and then learn to create dynamic memory know when to use malloc calloc realloc free do dynamic memory is usually not recommended for real time embedded applications as it is a bit dangerous to use memory during run time in some cases you might still need it so it's better to learn it then start with basic data structures arrays and linked lists these topics are good enough to get you a very good foundation in c especially for embedded systems coming to the resources to master c first start with niso academy c playlist then in parallel practice from geeks for geeks like study one topic and then practice the very topic in geeks for geeks for bit manipulation i'll share the resources to study and practice in the description below you can refer to c programming a modern approach by kn king for a reference the next topic to master is rtos but why do you need an os when you can directly load the firmware into the microprocessor or your microcontroller see when you have a lot of things running on the processor you need some kind of a manager that can manage and allocate the resources properly but why not a general os instead of rtos for embedded systems take an example of an airbag system you need the airbag to be deployed in a few milliseconds after an accident a general os will never guarantee you any hard deadline for this so there is a good chance that the airbag deployment can be delayed and even one second of delay can be fatal also a general os is too bulky for a microcontroller that is where rtos comes into picture it can guarantee that the tasks meet its hard deadlines and is also lighter on the microcontroller if you are still not convinced about rtos let me tell you how rtos saved the day for nasa and helped apollo 11 land safely on the moon in apollo 11 there was a apollo guidance computer agc 
which was responsible for landing Apollo 11 on the moon. When the lander was about to land on the moon, there was a radar that was sending random data to the computer and was unnecessarily overloading it. And because of this, the computer started missing critical deadlines. And mind you, this was a very critical phase of landing. But to the rescue, there was a special program on the computer which was managing all the resources and making sure critical tasks meet their deadlines. This magical program was nothing but RTOS. As soon as it identified that there was something overloading the system unnecessarily, it immediately preempted it, meaning discarded it and gave the CPU to the task with hard deadlines. Had the program not been there, God knows what could have happened. Now you know how important RTOS is. But what all to study to master RTOS? Concentrate on processes and threads, different scheduling algorithms, semaphores, context switching, memory management, kernel concepts, interrupts and ISR and how they are handled. You can master OS from NISO Academy. Concentrate more on the about topics and then the best way to learn RTOS is from free RTOS website. Just hop onto their website and you will find everything there. Start with RTOS fundamentals and then hop on to their build your first project section. There are just three source files and one microcontroller specific file. Download these source files and follow the instructions. It is given very clearly. It will teach you things in real time. I'll give both the links for free RTOS in the description below. Also, you can use KDAR, which is a real time scheduling simulator. You can schedule your tasks with different scheduling algorithms and simulate it in real time. I'll also add the link on how to install KDAR in the description below. For book, you can refer to Real Time Systems by JNWS Lee. Third, the next topic is Digital Electronics. All the processors we use today use digital concepts. To understand a processor in depth, you need to know the basics like logical gates, flip-flops, counters and FSMs. It helps you understand what's exactly happening on your chip. As a fresher, you definitely have to master it to clear your first rounds of written test. You can practice digital from this practice PDF. I'll share the important topics and resources to study with this practice PDF in the description below. Fourth, the next topic to master is computer architecture. To use any processor, you need to know how it's working from the inside. You need to know the architecture to be a better programmer. Mainly focus on cache concepts like hit and miss cache coherence and different cache mapping technique. For computer architecture, you can refer NISA Academy for basics and Professor Smithy R lectures. For book, you can refer to computer architecture by Patterson and Hensi. 8051 and 8086 are mostly covered in your syllabus and it is actually good to get started. Then explore risk v architecture. But how to choose a microcontroller to start with? The basic flow is mostly the same across all the microcontrollers. You can use Arduino to make your projects to start with. It is definitely good for beginners, but not for people who are comfortable with embedded. Because of all the inbuilt libraries it has, it makes it very easy for a fresher. But as you go on, you start taking things for granted and will never be able to write efficient codes. So once you are level 1 or level 2 in embedded, you can use the MSP430 family controllers. And after that, you can explore ARM M-class microcontrollers like STM32. Whatever microcontroller you use, keep this in mind. Using GPIO pins, handling interrupts, timers, and using converters like ADC and DAC. Knowing interface protocols, mainly UART, I2C, and SPI. Coming to embedded in different worlds. To understand this, let's take an example of ARM-based controller. The hardware chip here is made by a semiconductor company. This chip is used in automotive, aerospace and other consumer electronics industry. Embedded engineers in these industries are understandable. They use this chip to develop a system around it. But what do embedded engineers in semiconductor industry do? See, once the chip is manufactured and if it has any benchmark degradation or any other bug, you can do nothing about it. You will have to go back and do your chip design again and then again manufacture it. This obviously costs a lot of time and money. So what they do is even before the chip is made, which is the pre-silicon phase, embedded engineers write firmware and emulate if it is working as expected. And if there is any problem, they immediately inform it to the VLSI engineers. Also, once the chip is made, you cannot simply give it to your customers. You will have to develop some low-level drivers like your bootloaders and device drivers and then test the chip for its basic functionalities. This is called a bring-up phase. To be an embedded engineer in the semiconductor industry, you will have to have a very good knowledge of computer architecture and be thorough with cache concepts. 
Also, you will be developing bootloaders. So you have to have knowledge about assembly language as well. You can watch this video. I have explained everything about bootloaders and embedded systems from scratch. Then you need to learn device drivers. Coming to the projects and tools. First start with simple LED blinking and then interface a motor and control the speed of the motor using PWM. Don't use any inbuilt library to start with. Write everything from scratch. Then add sensors like a PIR sensor and learn interrupts. Like you can dim the LED on interrupt. Then use timers in your code. Once you're comfortable with all of this, check this PDF for project list level wise. Coming to the tools, this tool is just amazing. QMU, it emulates the hardware for you without needing any physical board. Like you can take an ARM M-Class board like STM32 and load your LED blinking code and control the inbuilt LED on the board and simulate it real time without any physical hardware. You can also get a debugger to debug. You basically get GDB integration. Here you can emulate all your ARM based boards like STM32. And as we discussed earlier, you can use free RTOS and KDAR for scheduling your tasks in real time. I'll share all the tools in the description below. Finally, coming to the skills. I think every embedded engineer should have these skills for sure. Writing efficient C codes and being comfortable with pointers and bit manipulations. Ability to go through the data sheets. Knowing the communication protocols, at least UART, I2C and SPI. Knowing basics of electronics, digital and basics of analog and network theory. Being comfortable with Linux based systems. Also check out this video to know more about embedded systems. If you have come till here, you definitely have the best plan to prepare for embedded. Make sure to share this video with all your friends interested in embedded. Also check out the Discord Chipcam community link in the description below. See you in the next one.